What is up to all my fellow Force users, droids, and rebel scum out there? Welcome, welcome back to the Padawan Podcast, the Apocalypse Movies All Star Wars Podcast, where we geek out about everything from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Jake Berlin, aka Qui Gon Jake, and I am joined today by my fellow Padawan, Jacob Bartley, aka Grand Moff Bartley. How's it feel to be called that again, man? Feels great, man. I missed that intro. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while. I, like, I looked at our YouTube channel and it. Our last Padawan podcast hit two months ago. Yeah, so and it's... that's like an estimation. It's yeah, so if, if you have joined us before, you know that uh, the Padawan is kind of one of our mainstay shows on, on Apocalypse Movies. Uh, we took a little bit of a hiatus, uh, not just because we were figuring out things here at Apocalypse, but also there wasn't a whole lot of Star Wars stuff going on. It kind of worked out. That yeah, way, so you know? there were little things uh, here and there. Obviously, the big one was the Rogue One trailer. We put that on the movie news show when it was dropped. Um... I think, you know, just to start off the show, I think we can kind of talk about a little bit, just a little bit of an um, intro to the show, you know, um, released a while ago, but I mean, we'll never really stop talking about it just because personally, I really, really enjoyed the trailer. Um, some great moments. It was very, very different from anything Star Wars we've seen. Um, and obviously, uh, Jin or so checking her out in the, in the lead role and all that story that was involved in there. You see Vader, a uh, whole bunch of new shots. So... Um, definitely builds the anticipation for this movie big time. Um, hopefully, they don't release another trailer. More than likely, they will. Uh, but it definitely, definitely will. It definitely gets like me more excited, money. more excited to to see this movie even than than I was before. Um, I know you love the trailer, but just quick thoughts on what you um, thought of the second one. Well, actually, I really liked it, but when it first came out, I didn't. It I wasn't, took you I wasn't going to... bananas over yeah. it. Like I wasn't like, oh my god, this is the greatest thing ever. I was like, I liked it. I didn't love it, but. Over time, I've grown to appreciate yeah. it a lot more um, because I just I know we've talked about this over and over again, but the tone, the war, how it's a war film, like, and it really feels that way, and it just it's so unique. Even though every Star Wars movie, hence the title, is a war film, mm-hmm. there's battles going on. This is this is, feels more like I've said this before, but it feels like more of a war. That how humans on Earth know war, how we know war, like it's more like a saving battle. Private Ryan yeah. type yeah. type of war style. We're getting that in a Star Wars movie, which is something I don't think we've ever had before. So that that trailer showed me that, and I'm I just cannot wait. I wish I could say that I'm not going to watch the next trailer, but I definitely am. I think so too. I, I think that kind of like the Force Awakens, kind of just get caught. But I will not watch Wars. the hundred and twenty TV spots that they put out. Yeah, I agree with that. I'll watch the, I'll watch the third out. trailer, but I'll cut off everything TV no, spots. I don't want to see TV spots. Yeah, yeah, so we'll definitely be looking forward to that. But as far as the show goes today, we got some good stuff to talk about. It's going to be a little bit short. Again, there's not a whole lot of Star Wars going on right now. Um, but we're going to kick it off with some Rogue One images. Um, a batch of new art was released uh, this past week. Um, with Rogue One, a Star Wars story now just a handful of months away, the merchandising gates have opened for the first ever Star Wars spinoff. That includes toys, accessories, images, and more. The latest promo batch to hit the web comes via Pyramid International, who have just released their latest ca- catalog, and it includes a ton of new artwork for Gareth Edwards' upcoming film. We get new looks at both sides of the fight, some possible alternate posters, and even a little bit of Vader. So Jacob, you checked out the images. Um, you know, what do you think? Any that catch your eye? Any you don't like? Um, what do you think about the new uh, artwork that was released? Um, I like it. It's it doesn't do much for me. We've seen a lot of this, but I never. I knew there was a second alien in the group, but I never really noticed that alien with the wide mouth. Open. Yeah, it looks like a like almost like an like an alligator or like a sea version. creature, yeah. like a shark or a sea monster. For some reason, I just. I knew there was another alien, but I didn't realize it. Well, feel like he couldn't be the only one. And they never like put him in the forefront until now. And if it isn't him, we don't know. But I like the one with the two aliens with K two S O in the background. Now we've talked about K two S O a lot, but I am I think other than Jin Erso and like um, a couple of the other side characters, Diego Luna, um, those guys. Other than Jyn Erso, I'm probably the most excited for K2SO. Well, it's his one line from the trailer. Yeah, like, a few, there was a few lines, but the one where, like, uh, the pilot yeah, said, you're, you or something like you're, that. you're not a threat, I will not kill you. Yeah. Like, I'm excited to see his personality because the droids are so important to Star Wars overall. And he's freaking huge. <laughs> like, this is the first droid who's actually going to be physically imposing who's a main character. Like, yeah. R2-D2... Does a lot. He he saves them, but more he can't than, run like K two S O, and he can't fight like K two S O. Like 
R2-D2, I mean, I guess he has taken out soldiers before, but, like, in reality, if, like, five soldiers went out R2-D2, they, they could destroy him. But I believe K2SO could take out five soldiers on his own, and that's something really cool. This thought never popped into my head, but it just did. These droids can theoretically live for, or technically actually live forever, right? Well, we've seen R2-D2 and C-3PO. I know this is, like, far-fetched, but if he ends up being something that the fans love... Why not bring him into the saga films? The now. Yeah. What if maybe just wait, you know, finish this trilogy. Maybe in episode 10, they come across him or something. Like he, they find his body and reactivate him. Like that's a possibility and that's really cool. But other than that, like none of the image stand out to me that much. Just uh, gets me more excited for K2SO and that second alien, the one with the wide mouth, stands out to me too. Yeah, I agree. I think that. Uh it's a funky little trio. You have a space monkey. You got a a, a very naughty killer ex Croc empire in, killer croc in space. Yeah, and then you have the <laughs> uh, K2SO, who is former empire. You know, it's kind of almost a murder bot uh, for the rebels. Um, I, the images are really cool. Stuff we have seen before. Obviously, all the dead trooper stuff is really cool. I really love the green accent on the black suits. Oh yeah, uh, for the Death Troopers and then the lights under. Yeah, the, I think it's a really cool look the uh, as far as green and black go, because um, we're used to green being a lightsaber color and whatnot. But it's kind of a cool accent color to their suits. Uh, I like some of the alternate posters as well. A couple of the Jin or so ones; those are really cool. Um, just seeing Vader again, back, you know, and, and realizing he's going to be in this movie is a big deal as well. Nothing new, obviously. The suit looks the same, but um, some really cool stuff and. I think that uh, we're going to see much more of this going forward because we saw a whole lot for The Force Awakens last year, um, you know, posters and promo images and everything. So I also really like Donnie Yen's weapon. I don't know what it is, some type of yeah. crossbow it looks like or like a rocket launcher crossbow. Who yeah, knows? Yeah, but who knows? It yeah, looks yeah. awesome. He looks like he's got a whole arsenal in, in his – he's blind oh, yeah. and like all this stuff going on. And he's going to whoop ass, dude. It's going to be cool to see him on, on screen. Oh, yeah. yeah so um, All right, well, moving on to – sticking with Rogue One, but um, – Going on to a little bit of droid news, uh, now it's time to move on to meeting one of the newest additions of the Star Wars universe. During last week's episode of the Star Wars show, Lucasfilm unveiled astromech droid C2B5, essentially an all-black version of our most favorite droid R2-D2. While our favorite Rogue One droid already goes to Alan Tudyk's K2SO, Edwards described the Empire security droid as the antithesis of C3PO. What role uh, or how much impact the character will have on Rogue One remains to be seen. Um, we don't really know how much this character is going to be involved in the movie. It may just be one scene. Um, but as for the look, it's cool. I mean, who know? We never really expected to see an all black R two D two. I think it's really cool looking. Um, they're calling him the evil R two D two because he works for the Empire. Um, who knows what kind of role he'll have again? Maybe he's working for uh, Ben Mendelsohn's character. Um, who knows? But uh, as far as the look goes, I think it's really cool. I'm excited to see what he's capable of doing. Um, we've seen a murderous R2-D2 in the comics before, and those are canon. Um, I don't know if he was an astromech, though. I could be wrong on that. But um, it'll be interesting, because R2-D2, as far as we know, is not going to be in this movie. So why not replace him with a much more familiar-looking droid and give him something to do? So, uh, yeah, Jake, what do you think? I love the look of it. I mean, it literally looks just like R2-D2, yeah. but all black. I just love that black color. Um, I don't think it's going to have a significant role in the movie. It might, like you said, it might just drive by once and mm -hmm. that's it. Or maybe it has like a bigger role than that, maybe a scene or two. But I, I'm assuming that we're going to see it interact with K2SO. Yeah. Maybe I they used to be partners on the side of the Empire and K2SO ends up, you know, turning sides and this droid doesn't. So that could be interesting. But just there's nothing to go off of other than the look. And I love the look. So. Yeah, it's it's something very interesting. We know that R two D two his brand of droid they work on ships. Yeah, so to it's going to be something like that. So maybe, maybe K two S O gets him yeah. to come join them, Possibly. and then you have another R two D two and C three P O relationship on this Star Wars Rogue One team. You know how everyone has those like R two D two replicas and like yeah. the life size ones. I want one of these. Well, he's all black. That would be awesome. He's, dude. he's very cool looking that would for be sure. Awesome. It just all depends on what the character is going to be like and how much he actually has to do in the movie. So, mm -hmm. uh, looking forward to that for sure. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, you know, stepping back, taking a little bit of Force Awakens news. 
Uh, we haven't talked about that in a while. So now that we've gotten talked about the Rogue One, let's talk about the Force Awakens. One thing about Star Wars that has always caught viewers' eyes is the visuals and universe created, and that's mainly due to the genius abilities of industrial light and magic, or better known as ILM. They've been working on the franchise since the original way back in 1977 and will continue their work on the galaxy far, far away for many years to come. They're currently finishing up touches on Gareth Edwards' Rogue One, and in celebration of that, they've released a fabulous video on focusing on their work on J.J. Abrams' The Force Awakens. The video details some of the biggest scenes from the movie, from Pin and Foe's escape to the climactic lightsaber duel between Rey and Kylo Ren. The video is up on the site if you haven't gotten a chance to check it out. But Jacob, you got to check this out just a few minutes ago. Um, we always praise the visuals behind Star Wars. We're always talking about it when a new Star Wars film is released. Uh, what do you think about getting a behind the scenes look at how all the visuals uh, are, are done? So yeah, I didn't really know about this video until you brought it up to me today. And I was, I never get too excited over stuff like this. Yeah, it's cool to see, but I'm, I'm always just like, whatever about it. But I loved this video. This was so it's awesome detail, to watch, dude. Really cool. I was like, wow, like the, it's crazy to think that the Force Awakens came out like almost what, a year, ten, <laughs> nine months ago. Yeah, and we're still getting new stuff behind the scenes stuff, and they do it on purpose. They plan it. Oh yeah, they want to keep Star Wars relevant all year long, leading up to Rogue One, and then leading up to Episode Eight. Like they're gonna keep Star Wars at least like once a month drop something that has to do with Star Wars, whether it's the new movie or the movie that recently came out. So it's smart marketing tool, but just this video on its own, like as a as a diehard Star Wars fan, I love seeing this. Like it's like a, a random casual fan might not get enjoyment from this, but for me, it's like I've watched this movie like 15 times, and I've seen the things that they're showing me so many times, and it's cool to see how they designed it and put it together with the visual effects and all this stuff. So I, I loved watching it. It you know you can't go wrong with with these behind the scenes stuff. Like there's no nothing negative about it. So I. I I loved it. Yeah, I agree. I think that, you know, we knew that The Force Awakens and J.J. Abrams tried their best to use as many practical effects as possible. Yeah, but it's impossible to... But do. it is Star Wars. Yeah, exactly. And you have to have some kind of visuals and you get the best in the business and ILM is the best in the business. They reinvent visuals every year and they worked on some of the biggest movies released, but um, it's really cool just to see certain things come to life and how they do it and the, the multiple pieces that go involved. And uh, the one that stood out to me is... Um, the runway with the X-Wings that Poe's flying in. The oh, very end of the yeah, movie, that's awesome. And all of the pieces that were involved in that and how detailed it was. Mm -hmm. And um, the fact that, uh, you know, even something that's so far away on the screen, how much time they take into doing it just for us fans and for the movie purpose, uh, it's really cool to see. And um, it's just cool to get a behind-the-scenes look at how it's all done. And a character like uh, Maz Katana and how she comes to life. Uh, Maz Kanata. Maz Kanata, excuse me. Maz <laughs> no, it's fine. I do it sometimes um, too. Um, yeah, I didn't really talk about anything specific that I liked. Uh, the Uncle Plot one too was pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, and we did we, see him get in the suit. Because I honestly thought that might have been CGI, but it, it was practical, right? Yeah, there, there was a lot of practical. Yeah. But and I that's Simon like, Pegg. A lot yeah. of people don't know that that's Simon yeah. Pegg. It's crazy. But the lightsaber yeah. stuff is cool, obviously. I love the Uncle and... Plot. I love the Maz Kanata one, too. Yeah. That was awesome. Because like, you see uh, the, the multiple versions they have to do that where the screen just kept wiping and going yeah, different and versions. The, what's the big ship that Ray drives past? Is it Star Destroyer? The Star Destroyer in that, sand. Yeah, see, yeah. That, that's so awesome to see how they do it. And then the 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 ship where you know Poe and Finn escape from I think it's just another Star Destroyer yeah, yeah. that the way they put that together mm -hmm. like it looks so real on screen it's crazy to think that they're not really walking on yeah. that you know it's it's crazy well, the, the one that it's not a huge deal to some or to most people but Ray's speeder you would think oh, that's yeah. fake but it's literally on well, wheels yeah exactly and that, see I love that How, like it's like, all practical they do as much practical as they can and that physical thing actually exists like if i were daisy really i'm like can i keep well, this i saw piece? that it's it's at disney <laughs> is it really i was the, when i was there a few weeks ago they should let you ride it <laughs> they should let no you they ride have it. uh they have her speeder and bb-8 sit next to it yeah the actual bb-8 i don't know if it's the actual okay. one but there's a, a the actual size if it's version. not the actual one it's probably an exact yeah replica of it yeah so uh, make sure you check that up uh, it's up on the site it's a really cool video it's about four minutes long um, very detailed and very cool so uh, we're going to move on from our, our movie news we're going to try and um, 
review all of the new canon books and, rev- and comics that start coming just out just extra here. canon stuff as much yeah. as we can you know and we and both Jacob and I we love reading that stuff I know Jacob's huge into comics right now so he's picking up everything possible and so um, today we're just going to do some Han Solo reviews uh, the new canon comic that is out I think it's what three issues they've in. done the third issue just came out two weeks ago yeah I so think. I, I'm uh, caught up on the first two Jacob has read the third so we're kind of just going to go over and non-spoiler talk about it and you know what it's about and, and kind of how it excites us and our anticipation going forward but um they're all kind of continuous so we can kind yeah. of just blend them into one i guess and um we, we could still go in chronological yeah. order though so let me ask you jake you ju- you just read them recently what did you think no, they're, overall they're they're awesome yeah. they're fun and you know um the one thing with han solo and the star wars canon stuff is i don't want it to damper what i think of him in the films that's why the new one worries me, but yes. I'm still excited for and it. And the comics, this these few issues so far have done a really good job of separating itself from the the times of the film, mm-hmm. but keeping like Han Solo. It is Han Solo. It's Han they, Solo, it, and yeah. it's you know we we see him in the movies, and he's always talking about the Kessel Run or whatever it is, like racing a ship around. And this comic is based around a giant race, a giant universe. race. And the Dragon Void. And it's super yeah. cool. And like there's all these different kind of characters, like these legendary racers, and he's just a smuggler mm-hmm. who's basically doing a job. And like it's it's super cool. And um, seeing him and Chewie kind of just fly the money and falcon around against all these people and him outsmart people who've been doing this for such oh, a long yeah. time and being the true Han Solo that he is. And um, I had a really good time with it. I'm looking forward to reading the third. And I'm guessing it's really good keeping the kind of same thing but uh what did you think i know you just read the third but what did you think about the first and second issue um so like of course i was excited and from the first page i liked it but i was weird because like once by the end of the first issue and you realize that so he's gonna go on this this race so this whole series is gonna be about a race how's that gonna work but it works yeah. like because he's no spoilers but he's not just on a race like it's not just simply i'm in this race i'm gonna try to there's win. an ulterior there's motive a mission he's yeah. on a mission yes while on while doing doing the race there's a reason why he's doing the race and of course he you know the mission is the main important part but of course han solo wants to win the race too like he's han solo so that's just the whole entire concept is awesome and i'm pretty sure it's only going five issues because which is, which is i looked up number four and it said number four of five. So they usually know how long these are going to go. Yeah. They've been doing this a lot. Like they did Leia five run. They did mm-hmm. like a Chewbacca Shattered run. Shattered Empire was six run. They did. Like they're like they're that. doing Poe Dameron. I don't know. That might go on longer than, than any others. But um, but yeah. So th- And I like that it's just five because a lot of these can get just dragged out. And like, all right, it's getting old now. So they can keep this contained tight story within five issues. And I love it so far. Um, one thing that I loved about the very first issue was that the Leia and Han interactions because yeah. like one of the top two or three things what I love about the first original three films is the interactions between Leia and Han like it's my favorite dialogue in the films and like them just talking crap to each other the whole time and you get that in the first issue and you haven't really seen her much since then which is alright that's fine because I'm very entertained with what's going on but that was one of my favorite parts of all three issues so far and then just seeing uh, Han and Chewie on a mission together like especially what happens in the force awakens like yes that's yeah as far as future stories go we're not going to see that anymore obviously we're getting the movie so we're going to get plenty of it but um this feels like harrison ford to me like this comic like it it is han solo so i love just seeing them interact together and i don't want to get into too much spoilers but the race itself is pretty damn awesome so yeah i i'm loving it so far it's one of my favorite and most anticipated comic issues yeah i think that one thing that interests me the most is um that the, all this stuff is canon now, so I'm interested to see if, like, if he does win the race, why have we never heard about it before? That's, that's true. That's why maybe think that the mission has happens. to do with it. Yeah, like, who knows? Because we've never actually heard it. We've always heard about yeah. the Kessel Run. We've never actually. And heard of course, of this they race. made it up after the but, movies came out. And you like know? you said earlier, we talked about it before we turned the mic on. But more than likely, Disney and Lucasfilm and Marvel, they're they're doing this comic. To see what works with the character. Exactly, for the movie. Who knows? This five run comic could be exactly what the movie is. Yeah, you never know. Like, it, it's a possibility. It, it more than likely won't happen. Like, we'll probably see the Kessel Run or how he gets the Falcon or something like that. But there could be two, three, four Han Solo movies, mm-hmm. and one of this could be well, the movies. It's hard because then they would have to show exactly what yeah. happened in here. It wouldn't yeah. be adaptation since this is canon, but he can reference the, the Dragon Void we can see these characters in the movie, yeah. future movies. Like, 
one thing I wanted to bring up is the so they have like the old professional racer and everyone says she's getting old she's that tall blue alien yeah, yeah, her yeah. name is Lou Riano that's her name and she's like one of my I'm most interested in her as far as the side characters go because you know she's like this legendary old racer who's been doing it for a long time she's like Yoda of racing yeah pretty much and like at first you know her and Han Solo don't really get along but then they start becoming friends and it's like it's really cool so we could I don't oh I don't oh he meets her in this comic but if they do two Han Solo movies before uh, A New Hope and then after that they pick up after that we could see a character like yeah, her yeah like maybe this race takes takes place in between two movies and the third movie picks up after the race yeah, and, and they come together you could see her in there or any of the other side characters or just even like little just little side things that are mentioned in here can have some type of an effect on the movies. So it's really cool what they're doing with this. Like no other entity could do this. Like it would be so hard for Marvel to have the comics be canon in the MCU. Oh like it would never work. Yeah. And I like that because I like that that's separate. Because Two different worlds I want to yeah. dive into a different world in the comics. Like you can do outrageous things in the Marvel comics that you can't do in the movies. But I love how they're doing this with Star Wars, how it's all connected, because there's so many empty spots in the Star Wars history that you can touch on. And this is just a prime example of that. Like, I love this. And as far as the third issue goes, I literally just finished it before we hopped on this podcast. It just continues it. It's Han and Chewie again, Han's personality. Like, I even had to point out something to you because it was just so funny to yeah. me. It's like, this is Han Solo. And the fact that they're able to capture Han Solo in this comic book gives me confidence for the movie because it's another medium or another medium and they're gonna they know what they're doing with han solo whether it's lucasfilm disney marvel comics they know what they're doing so i think they're gonna handle the character very well so yeah it's just pick up han solo's issues one through three if you have not read them yet especially if you're a star wars fan because this is real history like have you ever tried explaining to a casual fan what canon means yeah I, and it's so hard. like oh, they don't under, difficult they say oh okay okay like they don't understand mm -hmm. and so if you're a casual fan and you don't know what canon is it's the best way to explain it is it actually is real history in the star wars universe like this really happened to the han solo that you see in the movies so that's as best as i can explain it but it's definitely worth checking out for sure is so i know you've read a little bit of the star wars run Sapo so and han solo would you recommend Han Solo over them all? Okay, just as far as... The Star Wars like, comics in general, the ones that you've read. Yeah. Uh, as far as like an entire series goes, yeah. Um, like the, the runs, like a chronological story to follow, yes. But the Star Wars number 20, can we talk about that for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we both read it, right? Yes. So now let's move on to talking about that. That leads me to this. Um, so that one is just kind of a one-off story about Obi-Wan Kenobi and him watching over... And there's been a few of those through the run. There's been oh, like yeah. two of them. So the, star, the regular Star Wars run has like an ongoing story, but then for one issue, they'll, they'll dump off to this side story and mm -hmm. tell a little one-off. And Star Wars number 20 is about Obi-Wan Kenobi and him what he was doing on Tatooine watching over Luke. And Luke is like, what, 15? Yeah, he's pretty much some yeah, of that so, area. And this just goes to show what we were just talking about with Han Solo, how they're kind of testing the waters of, of an Obi-Wan movie in a way. And I love seeing this because this is him trying to hide his Force abilities and um, you know, talk, uh, showing us what he was doing on Tatooine. And um, it's really cool because they, they know him. Like, I mean, Obviously, they say it in the a New Hope, like Ben Kenobi, like the old man from down the street. Like we know that they know him, yeah. but it's just we don't to know think who about he that. Really is like Luke has been interacting with Obi Wan for longer than we think, but he, he just didn't know who he mm -hmm. really was. So that's really cool. What did you think of Star Wars Number Twenty? It was well. I've always been interested. I mean, we've always known that ever since Revenge of the Sith came out, that there was this gigantic gap where Obi Wan is sitting on Tatooine watching Luke. Yeah, about twenty years. Obviously, there's, about to, there's going to be stuff that goes down between that 20 years. And now that they have these comics, they're able to do that and tell those stories. And that's always why I was interested in reading that. And they've done a great job of giving us fans exactly what we want. Like, it's not, it's not stuff to do with the Empire or, like, it's not, like, huge galactic stuff. It's smaller Small stuff that he stories, has to deal yeah. with. And um, it, it's really piquing my interest and it's continuing to pique my interest. And um, I hope they continue doing off these one-offs where they kind of go off every six seven issues and tell these stories with obi-wan obi-wan because like you said 
They're going to do an Obi Wan movie at some point. I think it's inevitable. With you and McGregor. Yes, with Ewan back. And I think that um, one of these stories could be the movie. I think we're all shooting for Darth Maul versus Obi Wan, obviously. But who knows? They could maybe adapt one of these issues in some way, shape, or form within the movie. And if fans are still like, like if this comic sold out like tremendously, like within days or whatever, then they're going to want to tell that story to moviegoers oh, because yeah. it's going to be better on the big screen. Oh, yeah. So it would make sense. And then, you know, I think that fans, if they're not reading the traditional Star Wars um, comic run, make sure you look out for just the Obi-Wan one-offs. Well, you can pick up number 20 without having read yeah, any of the comics it's, it's, at it's all. It's basically like it's Rogue just, One is to the saga films exactly. where you can go in blind and not know anything. You don't have to have read one through 19 at all. Yeah, so I, d- yeah. I definitely recommend alongside the Han Solo comics. I think, you know... Everything we read Star Wars so far, I think we recognize. It's pretty they, good. They're doing yeah. really good, like the Anakin well, movie we, one stuff. And then we read Darth Maul, uh, Darth Son of Maul, Dothamir, which I is canon. We're going to try to do Shadow Empire at some yeah. point. I think there's um, a lot of good stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, so to answer your question, as far as like issues one, two, three, and ongoing story, Han Solo has been the best. But my favorite one comic is Star Wars number 20 because nice. Obi-Wan Kenobi is my favorite Star Wars yes. character. You know yeah. that. So of course it is. Like, And there's certain things that happen in there, and maybe we'll talk about it off mic because I don't want to spoil anything, but... There's certain things that happened in there that got me thinking about just Star Wars history and stuff. But so yeah, pick up number twenty. It is my favorite single issue, but Han Solo has been my favorite run so far. Real quick before we uh, end the show, I want to ask: Do you think of these one-offs going with Obi Wan? Do you think we could ever see Darth Maul show up in one of the one-offs? Definitely, I think that's the perfect testing ground to see. Do so you think it's the plan? Fan, maybe. I think that's a perfect testing ground to see if fans are still interested in that story. So okay. yes, I think so. Awesome. Well, good stuff. All right. Well, that's going to wrap up the Pat on Podcast today. Before we go, um, I'd like to thank Jacob for joining me and you guys today. Uh, let them know where they can find you online, man. Yeah, it was so great talking Star Wars again. Yeah, I missed dude. it. I, we we got to do this a couple times a month. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Jacob Bartley underscore and on Instagram at Jacob Ryan Bartley. Uh, and on this YouTube channel, please subscribe and hit that like button. I know we've been a little slow lately, not putting out as much content, but school just started. We're both busy, but and Geo's been busy too. So we're gonna we're gonna hike it up here pretty soon. We got a lot of good stuff coming, so stay tuned. Yeah, uh, you can find me at Jake Berlin, uh, Twitter, Instagram at Qui Gon Jake. Yeah, make sure you hit that like button, share, subscribe to ApocalypseMovies.com. Um, Check out the movie news every week. We're trying to do a whole bunch of movie reviews and news podcasts every week. Um, we're going to try and do the paddle on twice, possibly once a month, depending on schedules. So look out for that. Again, thank you for joining us today. Until next time, may the force be with you.